23 years old trying to get into real estate. I, this is what I, I figured this out. And uh, now I love teaching people how to do it. And so, yeah, so I do both. So now I'm on the other side now, now where I've been able to build up some wealth and retirement accounts. And so now I love to then lend others um, my retirement funds uh, in real estate. So, so there's both sides of it. Kind of, and so when we'll talk about that, you know, but you joke, you, I like it. How you dive right back, right into it right away. That's, that's what I do. I, I do both things. Yeah. I love it. So you teach people how to um, get, you teach people how to get other people's retirement accounts to fund into their deals. 100%. Yes. Okay. So that's the first thing you do. And then the second thing you do for your clients, people that are actually at Horizon Trust, you teach them how to use their retirement account to then fund either other people's deals or maybe even their own deals? No. Um, I teach people that already have retirement accounts who are with you know, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, other custodians, traditional kind of investing, how to actually get access to their money so they can use their money through a company like mine. My company is licensed and allows them to move it over tax free and then use it for their own businesses or own real estate deals. Amazing. Are you joking me, dude? <laughs> Why have you never told me this? We've hung out in like 15 green rooms together. Why haven't you been telling me this? Man, you know, when I try to get in your room, I feel like you got about 20 people around you. So it's a little bit tough, man. Only time You're I the see only you person I back. want around me, man. <laughs> You're the only person I want around me. All right. So we'll, we'll ease into this. We'll lay the runway and we'll take off. Hopefully you guys have some questions about raising capital. Are you guys excited for this? Give Greg a little bit of love. He showed up here on a Thursday afternoon. He's got a hundred other things. I think you're building Wednesday. a house. Or Wednesday. Doing something? Same, yeah, same building house. Wednesday. Yes. I'm building a house. I'm in California right now. Yes. It's my kid time for sure. So, so you're, you're building a house. Today's Wednesday. Yes, it is. All right. So right. you, you came yes. and hung out with us yes. today. You actually didn't start this way. You didn't start with horizon trust. You started in real estate. So what was, what was your first like penetration into the real estate world? Well, I was, I was learning all about real estate because everyone around me was making money in real estate. And uh, I quickly figured out that I had no money. My family didn't have money. Banks wouldn't lend me money. And so I was like, okay, cool. I can find really cool deals, but how do I fund them? And so I was struggling with the common, the normal way people fund their deals. And so I happened to learn this concept literally at the age of 23 and it's, you know, it's changed my whole life, not only being able to do deals from 23 on, but also now uh, I, I create a trust company to help others do this only because I think you can appreciate this. I was referring so many people to another trust company that they were letting me down. I would say, you got to do this. You're going to fund my real estate deal with your IRA. I refer them to that company. And then their customer service sucked. It took too long. And then they thought my real estate deal was bad nothing to do with that. So I was like, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to start a trust company. And so I only started for that purpose 14 years ago to fix something. And now it is actually the thing I am most passionate about because it literally changed my life. But also, you know, now thousands and thousands of investors I have that use their retirement account for whatever they want. My job, I don't go out and say, hey, look, you should put all your money or some of your money into wholesaling or in rental properties or flips. That's the, that's the magic about this is whatever you're passionate about, my message is do it with inside of a vehicle where you don't have to pay taxes. And, and or if you are passionate about it and you can't find money, let me show you how to use and unlock other people's retirement accounts to fund your business or your real estate. So, yeah. Okay. So, Greg, you and I hang out all the time. You actually are the sponsor of a lot of events that I speak at. And I'm, I, every time I look at you, I'm like, that dude just looks like he has a lot of money. Um, and we get to have chats. We've had dinner together, but we've really never dug deep. I really love what you started off with. You wrote, uh, you gave a nugget that a lot of people will just completely skim over the nugget you gave. And this comes up all the time. So for a, a lot of my high level students, medium wave Dave in here, been with me for a couple of years. I saw him selling a $25 million house today in the Hamptons. Very like just a gangster, amazing, amazing guy. He said something, guys, that you got to pick up. He said he was referring business to another company. That company wasn't doing his referrals enough good deeds. They wasn't, wasn't doing justice. They weren't doing their job. And so an entrepreneur sees an opportunity and they go, 
man, I know I could do better than this. I could pick up my damn phone. That's usually everybody's freaking problem. I could pick up my damn phone. I could put some systems and processes together, learn how to do this and actually create a revenue stream for me to amplify my platform. And so that's what Greg did. It's the same thing with like title and escrow businesses. Some people come up to me and go, why did you start a title and escrow company? I'm like, because I was referring so many people to a title company that would continually get overwhelmed. And then my referrals would come back to me and say, hey, just FYI Pace, I'm not upset, it's all good, but they didn't reply to me for four days and I went and did business somewhere else. And I, you get so sick of that, that you call the company and go, do you guys not want my referrals? Like you're making me look like a knucklehead. Do you not want my freaking referrals? And they're like, no, 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 we're, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. A really good entrepreneur stops and says, how do I take advantage of this? I obviously have flow of business. I can create enough flow to a company that people want that business. Why not go to a JV or why not go and start your own business? And that sounds like that's what you did when you were 23, right, Greg? Well, I didn't start the trust company until um, I was 30, 31. So what I, took I was, you so long, dude? Uh, it was working until it wasn't. And so uh, I was, I was, I was really all real estate and I was loving it. Uh, but as I was doing it, you know, as you build and scale in real estate, I was wanting to do more deals. I was having more relationships that wanted to lend me their money or partner with me um, using the retirement funds. And so after I had lost enough deals, uh, when I was, you know, by the time I was 30, 31, I was like, I'm going to fix this. And so I did. And I truly wasn't trying to create a revenue stream. I just wanted to continue to scale my real estate business and it was impeding me. And so I did it truly to, I thought it was going to be a break even business. It's, it's, uh, it's not. Um, but you know, what's great about it is, you know, when I talk about real estate now, it's totally different than like self-directed IRAs, even though that might sound not as sexy. What I found when I was trying to raise money in real estate, I go around talking to people, right? And then if you were to talk to any of your neighbors, right? Talk about real estate. I guarantee 99% of them think they're real estate experts. Why? Because they bought one home. So all of a sudden, so, so all of a sudden I'm talking to people about real estate, but if I instead changed my message to like, hey, do you, did you know you can use your retirement account and invest in real estate? 99% of Americans don't know they can do that. So I loved actually sharing a message that was new and fresh. And that's what really got me kind of engaged and, and committed to this message. I love this. Okay, so who who taught you that this was the way to raise money? Did you have like a mentor? Did you figure this out through a book or a podcast or something? Like, what was your first introduction to this? Yeah, it was it was a uh, it was a guy who's about thirty years older than me. He was in his fifties, and he was raising money um, for other businesses um, and for real estate trustees. And uh, I saw him doing it, and I remember him. He's also a life insurance guy, of course. He's selling life insurance. And, uh, but every time I did sit and listen to him, talk to clients, I would just see people, you know, get excited about real estate. And when he was able to teach them something new, it was a no brainer. And so, so that's why I decided, you know, I didn't go the insurance route. I definitely went the real estate route, but when I saw him doing that, that's what got me involved in it. And, and also, frankly, at a necessity, I mean, look, when you're, when you've got all, you know, the best deals, I remember, look, I, I, I've, I've sat in rooms with similar people that you have that are, you know, real estate experts, guys on TV, these celebrities, and I go to dinners with them. I remember this like 10 or 12 years ago, about 10 years ago, and, and they would talk, they would say even from stage, like, hey, if you find the right deal, the money will come. And like, this is a guy that's on TV, right? And it's like, and so I actually, I remember cutting him off and I was like, we were on stage together, we were on a panel. And I was like, well, hold on a second. I said, what this client or the student just asked about is finding money. And you said, if you find the right deal, money will come. I, and I looked at him. I said, I don't want to use names. I said, tell me about your first deal. How was that? How, you know, finding money on your first deal. And, and he, it was actually cool because it was the first time I think he was quiet on stage. And I wasn't trying to like show him up, but <laughs> I, was, I was trying to share with him, like, try to, try, try to remember when you were there and that, and, you know, doing your first one, two or 10 deals. It's not as easy. Sure, yeah. money is everywhere, but it's not everywhere for you unless you have some of the right relationships and or experience. So, so, uh, so that's why, you know, I, when I got into real estate, finding money was the most important thing to me. And even in today, I feel like if you can find money and resources for money, uh, you know, there's deals always coming at you. Like, I don't mind passing on deals every day because there's, tomorrow I'm going to see another deal. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so as long as you have money uh, relationships, uh, you'll always make money. So. Yeah, I tell people all the time the golden rule that we all grew up with as children is um, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, right? That's the golden rule. We learn it in church. We learn it in Boy Scouts. We learn it wherever. But then when you get into real estate, you realize that the golden rule actually is that he who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. And yes. if you can control the flow of gold, meaning raising capital, having private investors that are looking to you and saying, hey, play, Pace, go get yourself into deals, structure the deal, and we'll deploy our capital into that deal. I don't even have to be the person that finds the deal. Cold calls, sends out the postcards, door knocks, does anything. I just have to be the person that knows where the gold is and how to raise that gold up out of the ground so I can utilize it properly. So that's what you're saying we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how can people not go not go out and like go to their na- neighbors and say, hey, invest in my deal. You're basically changing the paradigm and saying, hey, do you know that retirement account that's actually not making you that much money? In fact, you probably are frustrated with it. It's not growing really that much at all. You know, you can actually fund real estate deals with that money on your own. That's what we're, that's what you're talking about, right? Right. Okay. hundred so percent. Yep. Do you, do you have a statistic of how much money is in people's retirement accounts? It's not being utilized. I do. There's over 85 million IRAs in the United States. These are IRAs, not 401ks. Hold on. I gotta, okay. I gotta write this down, bro. Hold on. Don't, don't give me these good statistics too fast. 85 million IRAs? Uh, in the United States. Now, that, that, that is not 401ks. That's a whole nother bucket, additional people. But let's just focus on, and I'll, I'll tell you why we're focusing on that. But 85 million IRA holders, which is over $5.3 trillion. So, so I share, th- this is one of the most important statistics for those of you individuals that are saying, I can't find an equity investor or I can't find money for this deal. The reason why I'm sharing that is do the math. I mean, how many people live in the United States? 350 million? 300, sir, three or 400 million, whatever the number is between three and four. I'm just telling you right now that there's between 30, between 25 and 30% of the people you know are your potential lenders. And so it, it's, these are people that are individuals, 96% of those IRAs are not self-directed, which means 96% of those 85 million accounts um, are in the traditional stock market, getting the traditional returns, and be it what you may. And, and I will also say, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not a hard sales guy, this, what we're talking about, is not for everybody. The, the individuals that don't have time and can't pay a little bit of attention to what they're investing in and how they're going to use retirement funds should not be talking to us. But someone who actually is fed up with the returns, don't understand what they're investing in, sick of the fees, um, this is the right kind of thing for them, which by the way, is most people. And so- Hold, hold on, we got, what, we, we got uh-huh. 96% of people that are not self-directed and self-directed is pretty literal, meaning you yourself are going to be in charge of making the decision and kind of keeping a, a microscope on that, so to speak. Um. How easy is it for somebody to go from like non self directed to self directed? Is it pretty simple? Yeah, and that's something we do, and I'm sure later we'll talk about it. But my team is we do hundreds of these every single month. And so, uh, moving your funds, and you can move all of or a part of your retirement funds from wherever it's at Fidelity, let's say Charles Schwab, to our company, our licensed trust company, and that, and, and there's no taxes, no penalties. Uh, and it takes about two weeks to move over. My competitors take six weeks, which is why I started a trust company. Um, and so the money moves over within two weeks and arrives in an account that's in your name or, you know, if it's someone else's account, their name. And, and it sits in a trust account with us and it sits there until you decide where you want it to go. And it can be, and we'll get to that later, you know, in several different kinds of things, whatever it is that you're passionate about. There's very few exceptions or things that you can't invest in. Like you can't invest in your own home that you live in, your own vacation property, but you can buy an Airbnb. You can wholesale. Uh, you can flip. You can hold. Um, there's lots of things you can. There's a few things you can't. I mean, you could buy Bitcoin, the, the nice dirty word out there. Um, but some people, you know, there's there's an opportunity there or silver, precious metals. Uh, I would say 70% of my clients invest in real estate. And I, I think that's because that's who I am. People know that our company knows real estate investors. 
Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, it's a very simple process. It takes two weeks. We help you fill out the paperwork. We do a quick consultation. It's super simple. Our fees are less than if you were staying at Fidelity. So that's, you know, some people are like, oh, well, it sounds, exp-. it's not. Whatever you're paying at Fidelity, Charles Schwab's typically anywhere from a half a percent to two or 3%. You just probably don't know it. And then we're less than that. So um, it's, a, it's a really simple process. Okay, so Rafa's got a good question in the side chat while we're on this topic. If I go and invest in real estate, 70% of your clients are investing in real estate, um, and I make profit on that deal, on that, tra- on, let's say I fund somebody's fix and flip, six months later, I, you know, I funded 100 grand, and I get $30,000 back. I get a 30% return in a six-month period, which is you know, pretty typical for a fix and flip as a private money lender if you're you know, an equity split. Mm-hmm. What can I do with that 30 grand? Can I, does it all have to go into the trust or can I use part of it for like sushi money, taking Greg out to dinner or like, do I have to at all put it back into my, in my stuff? Well, uh, uh, playing off what you just said, first of all, it needs to all go back in there. But technically if I helped manage that deal, I couldn't go to dinner with you because I, that would mean you're paying for some of your that dinner from that retirement account. But technically, you could pay my dinner bill. You could pay my management fee bill. Um, but you can't use those funds. So if my thirty thousand dollar IRA, an example you just gave, um, I flipped and I got back sixty or seventy, and then now I'm at a hundred. It all has to go back into your retirement account. But your retirement account can act like a checkbook. In fact, it could fund an LLC, and you can do your business expenses out of there. But you can't. But you can't pay yourself a management fee. You can pay you know, pays if he's the manager of that asset or an employee to do something, but you can't personally take it. And this is why some people, when I go to some events, particularly a lot of the 20 year olds are like, I don't want to hear about this. You're telling me about investing in something that I can't actually touch my money. And my message to those individuals is one, if you're looking for money, you can use other people's, but most importantly, number two, you need to do it now. And the reason why is you soon will create this nest egg. I'm not saying a real estate investor should or could put all of their deals in an IRA. That doesn't make any sense. You still do need to buy sushi and, and pay your bills. You can do most of you, a majority of your business outside of an IRA. The best example I gave, I gave it actually this last week when we were together to clients is a real client uh, um, put $6,000 into a Roth IRA, like eight, in, I think it was in March, so five, six months ago. And the $5,000, he, he wholesaled it. The five turned into 16. So the full 16 plus five went back so $21,000 back into the IRA, and he will pay nothing in those taxes ever in his whole life. And then, then he did it again. His current IRA, his Roth IRA that he set up with us for five or $6,000 today is worth $83,000. It's been less than a year. He will pay zero in taxes. And so if, if there's individuals, so I share that because there's, uh, when I do meet with a lot of younger people, they're like, oh, I like this, but I can't access it. I mean, you 100% can access it. You just can't pay your personal bills with it. Uh, and so it, there's okay, so many here, Here's the question. Let, let, me give you, uh-huh. let me give you a scenario then. Because I, I don't pay myself really much anything at all in, in my corporate structure. Uh-huh. So let's say hypothetically, I've got money over in my IRA. I transfer that money over to Horizon Trust, right? Uh-huh. And that money sits there in Pace's name and I've got an account number, one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. And the money sits there in that account until I decide I'm going to deploy that money somewhere, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. So let's say I deploy that into an LLC that is my fix and flip LLC, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Could that LLC not have expenses that are specific to that LLC, such as taking clients to dinner? such as wardrobe expenses, such as entertainment expenses, those types of things? Could I not have those normal type of expenses? You can have certain expenses. And now you're now, and, and, and I am, since I am recorded, I will be very careful about it as well. Okay. Um, this is where I say you need to talk to your CPA about it, what you can and cannot do. But can you have ordinary business expenses? Uh, can your LLC that is owned um, by your IRA, you, you could create a new fix and flip LLC. It okay. could be owned by your IRA and that LLC can, it's called a checkbook LLC. We do that for clients. A lot of clients, excuse me, that are doing a lot of real estate deals. I recommend the checkbook LLC. And the reason why I recommend it is for the things you're talking about. A tax bill comes in, you got uh, other, you know, any kind of expenses, the painting, whatever kind of expenses you have in the business come from the LLC. And so that just needs to be done 
by your CPA, that, that tax return. And then at the end of the year, uh, you update us, the trust company, with your valuation of your, uh, your checkbook LLC uh, by January of the following year. And so uh, which expenses you can and cannot put in, I don't want to get too deep into the minutia of have, that. Have the conversation uh, with your CPA is what you're saying. But but yeah. what but the reality is inside of my LLC, I have all sorts of expenses. I've got a cell phone expense. I pay my car for cars for the, the company out of there. I've got insurance. I've got all sorts of things that are paid for out of that LLC. So guys, as long as you have that conversation with your CPA, it sounds like technically those things um, can be paid for out of that LLC as long as you have that conversation with your CPA. Yeah, there, there's just certain things. I mean, for example, I want to make sure I'm clear on this. It's like like your personal cell phone, or even though I know it's used for business, it's not like that in a typical LLC. Um, uh, same same with your vehicle. Those are things that would not be really most likely accepted. Uh, it's usually not for your personal benefit. I know that sounds a little bit strange because it's like, well, it's my business benefit, so it benefits. So I, typically what I see clients using it for is the fixed expenses or a management fee to someone else who's managing the assets in there. I also, majority of the clients that I see using this are using it for syndication deals where mm. you're bringing me a deal and now we're partnering on it and someone else is managing a deal. That's how they're avoiding all of their expenses on those gains. That's Love typically it. how it's worked. People aren't, I would say, I, I don't know many people. I mean, I wouldn't know because uh, I don't get their, you know, their, anyone's personal um, tax returns, even on the checkbook LLCs. Uh, that's not that's not our job is to review those. But if you get audited, uh, you know, obviously you'd have to show that just like any other audit. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to bring in guys. You want me to bring in my CPA and have a conversation about this? I'm sure he has some clients that d does this. You guys want me to bring in the CPA? All right. I'll, we'll do that as like a follow up Zoom in the next couple of weeks. It'll be a lot of fun. OK, so, Greg, we got a lot of questions in the side chat. I know we you probably have things you want to talk about, but this is like a little private Zoom that we're doing. So. I, I let them just ask whatever questions they want. Tyler says, what's the best strategy to help my ultra blue collar dad understand exactly what you're explaining? I'd love to help him retire ASAP. He deserves it, but he sits on this 401k and his union pension and doesn't leverage any of it. I, he's just waiting until he's quote unquote eligible for retirement. Do you ever run into clients like that, Greg? Yeah, a hundred percent. Look, if, if you've got this, look, this was my dad, by the way, my dad, blue collar. Uh, I was in the real estate world for 10 years and he finally lent me $5,000 from his uh, retirement account. That was it. Like, like this was his, you know, I was his, his young kid and I was, I know at that time I was definitely making more money than him, but still it was just very hard for him. I mean, that changed over another five years after that, but uh, I understand that having those conversations, it, what's interesting, and I don't think, in fact, I even think you might have spoke about this pace once before, but it's interesting the conversations I have with people about raising money for my deals um, on how easy it is for someone who doesn't know me near as much, which is strange. Someone who has an IRA is so much quicker because they're just sick of the what's been happening. And so once you tell them something, they're like, tell me how to do it. I would love to partner with you and do it. But when it comes to family, family's always more difficult. And so um, my mom as well, my mom sent her, you know, moved her account. But let me, let me, before I, I can answer this a little bit more is the thing I didn't talk about was 401ks. If someone has a current 401k with your current employer, you cannot move that account. It has to stay until you either get let go uh, or you leave where the case may be. But, it, but in the last five years, like I think the stats, like over 40% of America has changed jobs, you know, fired, whatever, COVID's changed everything. So there is a ton of individuals who have 401ks that are from their previous employer just sitting there. Those are all eligible. And that's not even part of this 85 million accounts. So I, there, there are millions of accounts. I mean, uh, I, I guarantee there's people on this call right now or that, we're, that we're talking to Zoom who have an old 401k from a previous employer and you don't know exactly what it's doing, don't know what you can do with it. And it's been sitting there for maybe years, if not months. Those 401ks are old. You're actually able to transfer those into a self-directed IRA, IRA and take control. I don't know that it totally answers your question that, that was asked, but I will say going back to the dad real quick, uh, what I always recommend on new concepts, I'm not that guy to say, you know what? We're going to go all in on real estate and retire 10 years earlier uh, for somebody like that. Who's probably been doing the same thing for the last 30 or 40 years. 
My response to someone like that is how my first investor came on who, who lent to me. He had like a $600,000 IRA. He was, I think he was 63. And I convinced him of this new concept. And I asked him to lend $60,000 to me. So he moved over 60,000 from his IRA to a self-directed IRA. He, he, he was put on title, owned uh, 75% of that deal, but he had a first lien position. And my deal with him after I sold the property, I fixed and flipped it, was I would get 25% and he'd get 75%. He used his IRA. And so I flipped it. He got back 12,000. I got, I got $4,000 that four in my pocket I could spend. And he got 12. So his 60 turned to 72 and he didn't pay taxes on it. I share that story with you because that's a baby step, the best way to kind of approach family and people that think this might be strange and, and uncomfortable. I'll tell you though, this is something that's been around since the seventies. And some people think, oh my gosh, why haven't I heard about this? Which is, I can go on in tangents about that too, but uh, this is not anything new. The wealthy are getting wealthier because they're using rules that government's created. They, they know these rules. I mean, like the, I, I can go on and on. The Mitt Romney's when he was running, why his IRA was so big. It's not because he just put his money in the stock market and hoped and prayed the best stock, HAP. It's not what he did. He put it in stuff that he understood. He, he didn't put it in the stock market. He put it in businesses and things that he understood. And so I would recommend to your, fa- uh, to your father to baby step, do one wholesale, have him fund you know, uh, something with you. Do one deal or for somebody else. Be the banker, give him a 10% fixed rate of return and ease into that before he kind of moves over his retirement nest egg. Or a, another one, which actually is the route you took is you did not go to your father for 10 years. You went and showed and you created proof of concept with other people's money. And you said, and basically you just created a track history to the point where your dad probably one saw your credibility and two, your dad had some FOMO of like, wow, Greg's using all these other people's money. I haven't given him anything. You know what? Let me test the waters and give him that $5,000. I'm sure that there was a point in that 10 years where you're like, I'm not even going to ask my dad about the money. I'm just going to get to work because you probably are like, this is a dead end. And then your dad it, saw it, your track. It's too much history. work. It's too that's much right. work. He came to me. Yeah. He came to you. So that's the thing, guys. If, if you've got family, friends, et cetera, that are like, look, I'm not going to invest. Go create success by getting other people's money and, and create that success. And they will come to you where here's where um, that guy that was on the panel with you, here's where he's correct. Okay. He's not correct about your first deal where he says, well, if you have a great deal, people will come. No, here's what I say. This is the Kevin Costner effect. It's if you build it, they will come. You got to build credibility before people come out of the cornfields. You know what I'm saying? And so you, you don't just go get a deal and you're awesome right out of the gate and people just throw money at you. You got to go do multiple deals and then your family, your friends and stuff like that will then want to do deals with you. So, um, Okay. So great. This is, this is awesome stuff. Um, now the question gets raised. If my friends and family are not going to trust me right out of the gate, maybe my neighbors, are there a group of people? I mean, you said there there's 85 million IRAs, 96% of them are non-self-directed. How do I freaking get in touch with these people? How do I go work with these people? How do I find them? Are they on Tinder? Where are they at? <laughs> well, you, you, I mean, end of the day, it's a lot of what you talk about. Um, and you began even talk, I think I came on at the end of a different segment, but uh, I started doing the, I mean, you hustle, the, the RIAs. You just said there's 30 people in a room and you raised three, four, five, there's four or five million dollars in the room and you raised one or two. Um, I, that's where I found myself. I found myself in every real estate circle I could talk about. I actually, my first seven years before I had a trust company, I was the IRA guy and I was in real estate, but I would find myself going out and trying to find out if you have an IRA, if you're happy yet, you know, with it. And did you know you can move it? So the, you know, bet- between social media, I mean, today is different than when I was raising money 20 years ago. There's so many opportunities and channels that's where I recommend you starting. There's not like a place like, oh, look, go to this website. You're going to see the 85 million names. Not like that. Uh, in fact, you know, there's, there's, it, there is something about, you know, trust and some kind of prior relationship. And so if you can just start having the conversations everywhere you go, I know, Pace, you, you, uh, you know, <laughs> the more that you hustle and, and they know that you're a real estate investor, you're going to get deals. If people don't know you're a real estate investor, you're not going to get, you know, extra deals. It's not going to happen. If so, you start having, excuse me, those conversations 
about retirement accounts wherever you go. And you'll, you'll see, and here's the other thing that's really cool about retirement accounts that I like is you call the rates. I mean, a lot of times you and I, like if I have a deal, the most, I think the, the worst thing an individual can do right now is they go, they kind of vomit the terms to somebody. You don't, you kind you know, it's a friend, whatever. And you're like, Hey, look, I'm looking for this deal. I'm going to, you know, I'd like to have you come in as a partner and we're paying 12% or we're, I'll give you 20% of the company. Well, you didn't actually ask the right questions and listen to hear, does he even want that? Did, what kind of return do they want? And so what's great about the IRA is, and, and I got really good in, in my late twenties was I would listen first. And I know that's hard for most guys listening, right? Uh, if you're listening, but women are much better at this. But if you've, uh, my questions would typically come from, do you have an IRA? Um, what do you like about your IRA? Tell, describe it to me. So all of a sudden, this person is going to start telling me about their IRA. I love this about it. I love that it's this, this, and this. Oh, I hate the interest rate. Well, what, well, that, well, what rate do you get? What have you been getting? They're telling me. What would make your, you know, what would make you happy if you made that in a, in a retirement account? So all of a sudden, I found out, you know what? They've been losing ten or twenty percent the last year. They actually just want something that's stable. They want something that's actually going to just make them six, seven, eight percent return. I was going to give them twenty percent of my deal, Dang. or even twelve percent, right? But now, if you actually start listening, they're going to tell you the rates and terms they're looking for. And by the way, sometimes it's going to be the other other way around. They want twenty percent rate of returns. That's okay. I put that on my whiteboard and say, okay, when a deal comes, there's an opportunity, might be a little more risk that, that will offer a 20% rate of return or equity. I'm going to call that client. But most people are going to say, I just, I'm sick of my returns. I'm getting the stock market. Show me something different. And, and if you show them that and you give them a 10%, 8% fixed rate of return, that's beating the stock market. Okay. So I've got one of my accredited investors had $500,000 in my last syndication. And she says, uh, you know, she sees me on a thing promoting my syndication and she says, man, Pace, I would invest with you, but I can't, all my money's tied up in my IRA. And I was, I was like, let me get you over with a company that can help you out, right? And we, we help her out and guess how many weeks it took? It took eight weeks yeah. for us to get our money, she, her money. She actually missed out on the opportunity because I had other investors um, fund the deal before she did. And she's like, I, this is horrible. I, I wish I knew about it beforehand, bro. I didn't know that this is what you did. This is what I do. And that, and, and you hit a good point is there's so many times I'll be on a, on a, on a call like this. And then, and people love the idea. They're like, pace, this is great. When I find that next deal, I'm going to do it. You've got it all wrong. If you like this and think you want to do it, you open the account now. This is not like a sales pitch. You do it now because when the phone call does come from you or the opportunity comes from somebody else, your money's there and it can move in a day. Instead, they wait. People wait too long. Like, I'm going to do it once I find the deal. Uh, there's, my money sometimes sits in my retirement account and earns nothing for three or four or five months. And I'm totally good with it because it's waiting for that opportunity. Because typically when I invest my money, I'm not making eight or 10%. I'm making more than that. So if it sits for five months, not in the stock market, thank goodness. And then all of a sudden I hit this right in a nice wholesale deal or a nice flip and I turn my 70 into 130 and it takes me three or four months or six months. I just crushed the stock market. So you want to get your money in a place where you can actually take action and you have way more leverage and opportunity when you have money. Like if, if you were to call and say, yeah, I got 500,000 sitting in my retirement account. All of a sudden you can call the terms. My gosh. I'm thinking about all the people. On, I have a waiting list right now on a deal. Um, we're doing a non-accredited um, reg CF right now. And I've got something like a thousand people on my waiting list. And I'm wondering how many of those people have their money tied up in an IRA that they're not aware that they're going to have to transfer it to a self-directed in order to fund my deal. That's super or, interesting. Or, 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 or people who are going to cash out the retirement account to do it and they pay the 10% penalty in taxes, which makes zero sense. Like it, it just... It's just little tweaks. And that's, and that's a bit of our message is just change a little bit of what you're doing. If you can go from making 8% to 10 or 12 in a matter of 10 or 15 years, we're talking about a million dollars or millions of dollars difference just by tweaking what you're doing a little bit. Crazy, 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 crazy. Um, you know, one, one thing that we've been able to do is when I said, you know what, 
I don't have enough private money. I decided to create a community. So for example, if you watch my Zoom, here, here's what happens if you watch the comments. And I know you're on your phone, so maybe it'll be hard for you to see. But guys, if, if I had a good deal, how many of you guys would fund a good deal with me right now? How many of you guys are private money lenders if I find a good deal? Yeah, I see it. I mean, I mean, it's literally every one of my students is, is going to be a partner of mine one day on a multifamily, like a, a reg CF or a reg A. Everybody, will, everybody in my mentorship will no longer be a student of mine. They'll actually be a partner of mine. Everybody has private money in my group. It's, a, it's amazing. Like we've attracted that. And so my lack of ability to create or to raise private capital years and years ago created an idea to create a community of people that were basically potential private money lenders. And so we've created a, an amazing group. We found out that at, for every 250 sub two students that we have, there's about $15 million in private capital for every 250 students. It's crazy. Wow. wow. But what, what I don't, what I didn't really think about is preemptively making sure that people are getting their money into a self-directed situation. Because if I go launch a fund and they close out fast, like my fund is ready for, here's a, here's a good example. Do you know who Tim Bratz is? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Okay. Tim Bratz is a, he's a big multifamily syndicator. He's got like 3000 units or something like that. A couple billion dollars um, of assets under management. So him and I are doing a deal right now. The seller needed to close really fast. So I go, we create a fund. I have to, I have to fill that fund within a matter of seven or eight days in order to close the deal on time. It was a very, very short timeline. So people that don't have their money in a self-directed situation missed out on that deal. Like literally hundreds of people DM me are like, Pace, I couldn't move my money that fast. And now I'm realizing like, you guys got to do this stuff beforehand. You got to have your money ready to invest before the fund goes live or before you make a decision on a deal. Otherwise you potentially could miss out on that really good deal. That's right. Okay, so that's what your company does. If, and, and this is really good for my students as well as if they have an investor that goes, yeah, I'd love to fund you $100,000. Let me cash out my IRA. You're, you need to go, no, 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 no. Let me introduce you to Greg's company. So how do they get in touch with your company? Uh, you can just email me. You can go to our website or email me, Greg at Horizon Trust. Me and my team will respond to everything. I, I, I am very, I, I, that's one thing I have noticed about you. You care and you, and you show it and you do it. And that's the same way that our company will, if you email me, Greg at Horizon Trust, that's it. Email me, Greg at Horizon Trust, or you can find me on Instagram, whatever the case is, or Pace can connect you with me. But um, Horizon Trust, we we will take very good care of you. We're, we're quick. And I think that's, I mean, I started the company for that reason. I mean, if you think about it, those clients that missed that deal, that cost them hundreds of thousands, if not at least thousands of dollars. And so Speed is important. And accuracy is important. We're a boutique little company. We're not a Goliath. You can get a hold of me. I started the company. I, I get excited about it because there's just so much opportunity. And and it, look, everyone everyone around you has these old 401ks. That's the craziest part. I feel like even more so than the IRAs. Bro, there's a is, handful of people in the side comments that said they they have dead for they have 401ks from old companies. How many people in here have a 401k from a company you used to work for? Boom. Like got a dozen right now, 20, yeah. like 20 people right out of the gate. Yeah. So what the freak it, do we do with that? It, that Well, that you can self-direct as well. You can move those to a self-directed IRA. Again, tax-free and this transfer-free. We sell, set it up for you. Super simple. But that's that's already sitting there doing nothing, probably. I mean, unless you're crushing in the stock market and you're doing something, I don't know. Keep doing that. But if you want to start investing and in lending in other people's deals, other people's funds, I mean, I, I lessen other, uh, lend to other people on their own deals or in funds. Uh, you, you can be totally passive. In fact, that's what's, that's what's advisable is being passive in your retirement account, but investing in things you understand. You know, like, like you said, in your fund, when your fund launches, I've done a reg A before. And, um, and those are, you know, you can, you can raise a ton of money, but a guy with just five or 10 grand might not be able to go out and do a big flip, 10,000 bucks, but they've got this old 401k. And now all of a sudden they're in a fund that you're managing or they, that, you know, they trust you or somebody else and they're making a good solid return. High teens or high teens or 10, 12%. I mean, these are, these are all around you and, and your typical financial advisor. And I don't want to hate on them by any means, because a lot of people need a financial advisor. This is not for everybody. And so, but for those of you that actually want to like pay attention, advisors don't typically share this stuff. Because one, they don't either know about it 
or number two, they don't get fees. My parents used to get phone calls from their advisor, not because they had a hot st- stock tip. I mean, when's the last time your advisor's like, I got this great. I wish they did, by the way. That would be cool. <laughs> like, hey, you got to buy now. I, like, they don't do that. They're like, sit and wait, hold it out. No matter what, that's the answer. And it's not acceptable. Typically, it's that and or how about we increase how much you contribute to your retirement account? Because then their fee goes up. That's how it works. Bro, I was just on a call with a financial advisor. I'm interviewing someone right now. And he goes, where are you? What are you doing with your money? And I start telling him, here's what I'm doing with my money. He's sitting there taking notes. I was like, I, I was like, man, this guy's really good at like understanding. He's like, at the end, he says, man, I got to share a lot of this with my other clients. This is amazing. Like what you're doing is amazing. I'm like, aren't you the financial advisor? Like, <laughs> yeah. um, so here's, here's a couple of funny things. Emilio says, bro, I got thousands in a 401k. I had when I worked at a mill like 10 years ago and it's just yeah. chilling doing not- bro Emilio you need to switch this over email Greg yeah. let's get you to fund into a, a syndication or some sort of multifamily deal let's get that freaking mo- money moving for you I see a lot of my friends their average return their IRR their average IRR is somewhere around like 15 percent that's a great return you should be great making 15 percent 15 percent nobody's making that yeah, in the and, stock market and well and, the, and that's the thing is like if you and I uh, I'll pick on you for a second, but Pace, you and I each invest in the same deal. We syndicate it, right? I put 50 from my IRA, my Roth, and you do 50 from your LLC even. And and we flip that deal in six months, three months where the case is. And we each get back 25,000 bucks. My 50 goes to 75. You pay your taxes on your 25. Now I'm compounding on 75. You're compounding on 65. That over five or 10 or 15 years is millions of dollars. Literally. And then we have a calculator. You can go hgccalculator.com. You answer four questions. This game is the funnest. You know, I, I love playing that game. You just start plugging in numbers and say, okay, for 10 years, what's the difference if, if I don't pay taxes and compound it at 12% instead of 8%? I'm not throwing in these like 20% rate of returns, which we all can do. I'm just putting 12 to 8 and what that equals. And the difference between 12 and 8 over like 15 years, this concept, is 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 not like four or five six million dollars it's like 10 i'll have 10 million dollars more money than you just because i'm using something that the irs has approved this is i mean and, and i'll tell you something that that you guys might appreciate uh there's a new rule that the government came out with um uh, they call it the nicknames the peter thiel rule some of you probably heard of it but the, one of the founders of paypal he funded he bought his stock in the beginning when they created paypal uh, his ownership um, in the beginning, right? He was a founder. He put $5,000 in with his Roth IRA. Now Roth, is, as if you guys recall, is after-tax money, meaning it grows tax-free and you pull it out tax-free. Never pay a dollar in taxes. So he bought his stock in PayPal for $5,000. Today, is, uh, if you can Google it, I think it's worth over $4 billion. He sold his stock and put it into Uber and sold it. But so, so the government came out. So this is this is a new rule for you guys. You now can only make up to ten million dollars per year in retirement accounts. They put a kibosh on making billions of dollars, but I still feel like that's pretty good. Like if you can do ten million or less every year, you're good. But the, the, these are things that are out there that you can use. You just don't hear about, and that's what's so fun about the subject. What if I, let's say I'm trading forex, right? Let's say I'm doing like. I got a trading business and I scalp gold or something like that. And I'm just doing day trading and I make 50 grand a day. I have friends that do this. I'm sure you're, yep. you're connected with people who do this too. Yep. Yep. Is there a way I can do that through a self-directed IRA? hundred percent. We have lots of people that do it through TD Ameritrade through they absolutely. Uh, what you can buy, invest into a business. You can actually fund uh, other passive investment businesses that are off the wall kind of things. Like if you wanted to pitch me, Hey, we're going to start this, you know, Pace is going to start a new marketing company and looking for an equity investor. I would put my IRA as the equity investor, not my LLC, not me personally, and all my distributions I would not pay taxes on. But yeah, absolutely. You can, you can do, you can do the stock market Forex stuff uh, with your IRA. Yeah. This is amazing. How do I get, how do I, can I get an IRA without a W2? Uh, you have to, as a, as a, uh, you have to have a social security number and you also have to make money. So you don't have to necessarily have a W2, but you have to make money. So you have to make, if you're going to contribute $5,000, you have to have made at least $5,000. Um, we do almost any kind of, re- so that, let, let me, I think I saw one of the questions pop up. A self-directed is not a IRA type. Um, 
our company is a self-directed IRA company, meaning if you pretty much any retirement plan that's out there, you can do with us. So if you want to do a Roth, a simple, a traditional, a 401k with us, um, uh, the kids plans with us, we can set up any one of those type of accounts. So if you already have it somewhere else, we can roll it over and it'll still be the same kind of account with us. Uh, that we, and our rules are the same as whatever they are with Charles Schwab. We don't have any different rules as far as what the government says uh, that, you know, when you can take it out, how much you can contrib- contribute to it. Our rules are just on what you can invest in. Well, our trust company is an alternative asset based kind of company. So you invest in what you want, but it also means you are, you take the liability, which is why I don't pitch or promote a specific investment. I'm not a fiduciary. I don't make decisions for you. You should put your money here. Um, most of our clients come to us through different events. They've already cho- chosen like, Hey, look, I'm just sick of this. I want to be in real estate. I want to, you know, I already have a full-time job. I actually don't want to fix and flip, but I want to invest in someone that flips and flip, uh, fix and flips. Perfect. That's a great scenario for individuals. This is amazing. Guys. I'm glad, I'm glad you're impressed. Cause I've, I thought you were going to a little bit when we talked last couple, couple of weeks ago, you're like, yeah, I don't know. I've been told not to do this retirement thing. So this is, I'm glad that uh, this is new. Well, here's the, it, part of the questions. I it's my job to act like the audience, right? It's my job to be a good interview in, interviewer so that I can in, evoke a true answer for the people in the audience. I know all this stuff. I have a little bit different strategy. My strategy, which now I'm thinking about, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I have an a self directed, especially in a couple of things I'm doing, especially in like fix and flip. So, for example, last year I made 1.5 million dollars net in my fix and flip business. So I have, a, I, I, I'm a real estate professional, so I can go take that income and I can write it off through depreciation, which is great, but I got to go chase, instead of just putting that $1.5 million into our business account and then figuring out how to go buy assets with that in order to get the depreciation to then wipe out the gains from that $1.5 million, I could have been flipping all of that in my self-directed letting that all grow and not having to worry about having to go buy the assets to chase the depreciation. Is that correct? It's partly correct. And I saw someone comment that you actually can invest in your own deals. I think someone commented that you can't invest in your own deals. You can't, when I say, typically the, the, the language is actively. And so if this is what you're doing on a daily basis and you're actively flipping deals, you can't just throw your income into retirement account and avoid paying taxes. This is for a passive and passive and active is for your CPA to define, not me, but you can kind of get the idea. That's why most of my investors that work with us, they're putting a handful of their deals, in, their passive deals in a self directed account. And so in the example you gave, you could have a different LLC. That's not the one that you're currently doing all of your active business stuff. And that LLC could be owned by you and Jamil, let's say, or your other partners or you and your wife. It actually can be owned by that. And you do a couple passive deals in there. You could hire someone to manage them. But if you're actively the one managing it, that's where it becomes gray and we need to talk to your CPA. But you can absolutely invest in your own deals. And also what's pretty cool about it um, is you can also borrow non-recourse money. We have lenders that, that, that come at me all the time saying, we want to lend to your investors. So let me give you that example. If you have someone that has a retirement account with me and they're buying a $200,000 a rental property or, or fix and flip, and you want to borrow $100,000, you can borrow it uh, 50 to 60% of that purchase price from a bank non-recourse. Uh, and that's the important part if you're going to borrow money, which is, again, probably a different tangent you want to maybe go on. But I wanted to share that as well, because some of, some people only have $100,000 in retirement account, and they're trying to buy you know $200,000 properties. That is possible, and you can actually get leverage. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm very much a... Um monkey see, monkey do kind of guy. And I know a lot of my students are the same way, meaning when I am excited about something, I go, let's, let's do it. Let's just do it. So here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, how do I, can I get a, can I set up through you guys, even though I, ha- I don't have an IRA at all? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll set you up one. In fact, what you'll want. And that's why everyone, it's, it's different for everybody. We need to know what you currently have. If you have anything, how much you're making to find out which kind of account is best for you. But for you, uh, I already know you're, you're going to want a 401k. We're going to set up a 401k for you because it actually allows you to max contribute up to $60,000. Uh, you want to do that. And, and, and that depends on how much money you make, but every individual is different. So the answer is yes, we can help you set that up for you. 
Okay, yeah. what's the advantage of me investing? Let's say I go next month, I make a couple hundred thousand bucks. I take 60 grand of that. I can deploy that into a 401k. Is that a tax deduction? Yeah, it can be. Yeah, we can set up a 401k where it is, is a tr with a traditional account underneath it, where it is a tax deduction. You would $60,000 would be written off of your income. But I wouldn't recommend that for you. Um, I would recommend that you open up a 401k with a Roth account which means you don't get the tax deduction now, but means your 401k will grow tax-free and come out tax-free. And for how young you are, that's what is ideal for you. But if you're looking for a tax write-off today and you're not worried about the future on that, then yes, we can do, it's a 100% tax write-off. This really depends on your situation. And it's not complicated, by the way. I don't want to make it complicated. It's usually a couple questions that we'll ask just to find out where you're at and what your goal is right now. Is it to save taxes today or is it more for later? And then we'll help you set up the right account that, that works for you. Nothing's complicated, man. I mean, in, in the reality, like when we were all one year old, two year old, we couldn't put on our own pants. Now, like we don't mm -hmm. even remember putting our pants on this morning. And maybe Greg hasn't put his pants on yet. I don't know. But things <laughs> become really on. short. So things become incredibly simple as you just do them, right? So it's okay to feel a little overwhelmed, guys. If some people are in here like, I don't even know what we're talking about. Well, guys, at some point, there was a point where you needed training wheels on a bicycle too. Don't stress out. It's okay to be overwhelmed a little bit. Okay, so this is great. Here's what, Greg, here's what I want to do. I imagine you're going to be in my world for a long time. You and I have been bumping into each other for the last year and a half at all these big events. Who can I put in your company inside of my very private Facebook group? If people have questions about this kind of stuff, is there somebody in your, in your company that can be in my Facebook group at, that we can tag anytime a question pops up? Yeah, there is. Let me give, what do you would like? Her you guys want, do you guys you want, want Greg her, to come in and ask questions? Or you, you guys be able to have some love in our private Facebook group? Yes or no? Somebody says, obviously. <laughs> So like, you know, you know, Steve Harwood from PCS, right? Yeah, I do. Yep. Yep. Who loves PCS, by the way? Do we, do we bring in the best freaking companies? Everybody Love loves Steve. Steve. Everybody loves Love PCS. Steve. So what happens is um, we, we tell people, you know, set up with PCS and then we have a couple of the actual team members from PCS in our Facebook group. So if somebody has a complaint, which does happen, people have complaints, right? We jump on it immediately. I, I'm not being paid to promote. I just want my people to make sure they have the best access to the best tools, the best training wills, so to speak. And so they, they don't get, it's not like they're getting tagged 15 times a day. It's like they're getting talked, they're getting um, tagged maybe once or twice a day. And it might be something that's already been answered multiple times. And sometimes the answer is Steve or somebody on his team just goes, hey, email me here, here's my email. But it's nice to be able to have you or somebody in your world as a character inside of our community that people can rely on for these types of questions. Do you guys want them to come into our Facebook group or what? Bro, I could do a thousand Zooms with you. We didn't even touch some of the diet. I, I know. Way more. So this, this is great. No, I'll give you, do you I can give you, uh, yeah, a great person, uh, Claudia, on my team. That would be great to join. And by the way, I'm... My email as well, but I can give you Claudia. And if you, how do you want her to join via an email or what? Oh uh, yeah, um, yeah. Text me her in info. I'll get I'll get Melissa to get her in. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. She's actually listening. She just commented as well. She said, "Give give them my number." So she's here. <laughs> okay, great. And, and I want to give everybody a ton of love. Here's what I also lo love doing. It's kind of the same thing I do with PCS, so people truly understand the process is I will show my entire corporate structure to my community. Like I have no, I hide nothing. Like here's what I make, here's where my LLCs are, here's this, here's where my assets are, here's what this looks like. For people that have 401ks and IRAs, like they always ask me like, Pace, how do I use my 401k? I don't, I don't know, I'm not a 401k and, and IRA guy, I'm just not. Yeah. But I'll, I'll contribute $60,000 to a 401k tomorrow. And then what I'll do is I'll track like the growth of it and what I do with it. If you guys, would you guys want to have, like, I could even create a live web page that you guys could, it could be like paces401k.com and you guys can go in and track like once a month, like what is my 401k doing and what investments am I doing it with? I, I want to, who's, who would be the person I would get interviewed with like on your team? Uh, Claudia and she's on here listening. Okay. Claudia. If you're okay with it, I'm okay with just literally doing a Zoom with you 
and letting my community either watch it live or letting my community watch it after the fact, I will expose all my secrets, but I want people to see what it looks like to set this up. And then I would love to do like more zooms with you guys to see what that looks like as it, as it progresses. So an IRA doesn't make sense for me. Uh, 401k makes the most sense for you. You can put away more money that way. Okay. And I can do whatever I want with it. Well, there's a few exceptions, but we've already talked about the things you can do. Um, but there's more we can go. I can probably do a whole 30, 45 minutes on what you can and cannot do, but the, it's almost unlimited. I've got a list of like 40 different things you can invest in, including the stock market, but the gold and the bitcoins and real estate and wholesaling and flipping. Uh, it's just more of the technical part of making sure that part of it's passive. It's not all um, active investing, which we can kind of talk about in more detail as well. But like but, but all your syndications, 100% syndications work. You're lending. You can lend on any deal. You can you can partner. If someone brings you a deal, typically I assume you're not the guy that's doing on all of your deals, overseeing all of it. The next deal that comes in, your IRA could lend X amount of percentage on it and own that percentage on that deal. And then it, when it pays off, it goes back all to your IRA or 401k. You guys want me to try this out and like track this for a couple of years? You guys can see exactly what I do with $60,000 and watch how fast I grow it. Who, who, I would almost bet somebody I could turn that $60,000 in my, in my 401k. I bet you I could turn, hold on, let's, let's do the math on this. I bet you I could turn that 60 grand into half a million dollars by the end of next year. Maybe more. Hey, can you, can you real quick, just if you're in front of your computer, can you go to HCC calculator? Real, it's just four questions and it'll answer this for you real quick. Yes. Hold on. <laughs> HTC calculator. HGC. HTC. HTC calculator. It's okay. it's just we it's it's Ramsey's calculator, but it's perfect. Oh, I don't. I'm not a fan of Dave Ramsey. I, I'm not either. But I, this the calculator is great. I mean, I, I I think you and I are probably on the same page. I love 99 percent of what he says. Yeah, but it's the couple percent that's a problem. It's the so it's the HTC Desire 530. Or, uh, no, HTCcalculator.com. Oh, I should just go directly to the web page. Okay, got it. I let uh, Google um, give me a suggestion. I screwed up. Let's just do this right now. I think this is what you're like. What you're talking about is perfect. Okay. Pace, how old are you? Let's put it in together. Okay. Current age, I'm 39. Don't tell anybody. People think I'm 52 because I'm so smart. Let's um, just put 45, six years. Is that fair? Um, what to retire? No, no. Well, I mean, that's or what my, this as my current to. age. No, no. When for when you retire, let's put forty-five. You're not going to. I get it. But this is the oh. game that you're just you're starting. Okay. And you're going to start with sixty thousand dollars. You just said that. Okay. That for that's for the question of how much do I have in uh, investments currently? Uh huh. Because okay. you'll start with that, okay. and then every year, every year you're going to put in sixty thousand. Okay. Just say that because you can. And then this is where let's just say you're going to turn your sixty into a. 120 in the first year, let's just put a hundred percent rate of return. Okay. Just because that's the math you just were starting to use. I'm gonna, I can turn this one sixty thousand 60,000 into whatever. My math on that was actually five. I have something that I do that makes me about 500% a year. Should I put that number in there? Or is that just too big? No, it'll blow it up. Oh, it'll blow it up. 60,000. Also, I said, uh, monthly, it's only 5,000, one, two, three. Okay. 5, so sorry guys. I, 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 I didn't know if Greg wanted me to share this or not, but I'll share it with you guys. Okay, cool. So, um, hundred percent, you want me to calculate this SOB or what? It's just, it looks too good. I don't know if Is I want it? to show it. Ooh. No, no, you, uh, no, no. You got to go down to, um, how much you contribute monthly, a uh, 5,000, not 60,000. That question oh, I left. Yeah. Okay. You're joking. So you would, you would, you would have put in three hundred sixty thousand dollars. But if you're compounding it at a hundred percent every year, that's your return. Now you can mess around with these and do a little bit more realistic for most people. Like if you can put five thousand in monthly in your realistic return, do do something a little less because this is just it's too exciting. I mean, this is legit though. This is one, this yeah, is one of the yeah. things I do that legitimately gives me yeah. a return. Actually, more than that, but um. Let's do 15%. How about that? Yeah, do 15%. Damn. 
but, but good. I mean, look, look, look how simple that is. If you, for just six years, because six years based on this, look, it says on the right hand side, you would have put in $360,000. Your account is worth seven twenty five. dollars I mean, that, that is a huge difference for most people that are on this call. Just doing, just compounding and not paying taxes is a huge difference. There's just, it's just, it, there's, it's incredible. Most people wait till they're in their fifties before they start saving and avoiding their taxes. And that's the problem. Bro. You can, anyone can play with this all day long. It gets exciting. Actually, I've done it. I've spent a, probably a couple hours on this because I've done it for my son. I got a 20 year old. And so he's like, okay, dad, what if I do this? I can only put away like $5,000. Those numbers work, put away $5,000 per year. That's it. And only make 15 or 12%. It's, it's huge. And then what can, I do, what can I do for my kids? Uh, is, is your, I assume your kids do make money. So if they are making money, uh, then you can contribute typically up to $5,500, but you can play that game too. Like put, put in, you know, the kids, I know your kids are, uh, well, do you have, how many kids do you have? Not enough. I know you have the one. Not, I mean, not just enough. for fun, play that just for fun, play that number. Okay. So Asher is 14. Let's say yeah. he decides to retire at, um, 45, 45 with you. Yeah. I then he, let's say I put $5,000 in Yep. and I do $5,000 yearly with a 15% uh, return. Well, that's monthly. So you oh, monthly. So put in, uh, so put in 500 a month okay. and a 15% rate of return. Dang. Yeah. He should, oh, he should have an account, a Roth account, and he can, should contribute $5,000 per year. And there you go. Do I get any benefit if I contribute the $5,000 for him? No, no. But can I? Uh, he needs to contribute it for money he makes. Okay. So my son does make money, which is great. He definitely makes more than $500 a month. Interesting. Anyways, you, you, get, you can go on a tangent, but it gets exciting. Numbers get me excited, but this is, and you, if you start, Figuring out like the difference of me and you, like not necessarily me, but somebody else who only makes 10% instead of 15 because they've got to pay taxes every year. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference. It goes from four and a half million to 1.3 million. That's what the typical person's doing is they're doing their real estate investing outside of an IRA. Therefore, the returns are you're having to pay a third of your money to, in taxes. And so you go from four and a half down to 1.3. So these are just concepts that anyone can be using. And that's, what's powerful about this self-directing uh, concept. Anyone can be doing this. So do you guys want me to do, you guys want me to do a series on a 401k and a series on my son contributing to his own thing. Would you guys want to see that? Or is it too much content? Greg, what makes us different is we all hang out a lot together in my private community. We do this week, we'll do 26 private support calls. And, you know, there are specific topics just like this. It's like earlier today, we, we have this thing on Wednesdays that we call it pace studies, where we go through a live deal that I'm working on right now. And my transaction coordinator and my operations manager goes through for two hours every Wednesday, one deal for about two months. Like we opened escrow. This is where the deal came from. Here's the paperwork. Here's escrow. Here's what's going on. Here's where pace is private money. Like literally every part of the deal is shown live and it happens on See, Andrea says pace studies was super. Everett, who who was there today for pace studies? Was that cool, everybody? So um, I could do a series with you, bro. If you're if you're down with it, like we do once a month or once a quarter, and we come in and we talk about these kind of things. We go, all right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. We could just hang out and have a lot of fun. Let's do it. Totally in. That'd be great. Are you sure? I you're love. I, I, yeah, I'm totally in, and I would love. I love your idea of let's get your account open so everyone else can see it as well and let's just follow it. But what did Pace do with his follow? Kind of like follow my 401k, like mm -hmm. you said, you're what, and let's show them where you did it first. What, what was that first deal you did and what did it turn into? And that goes back and then do it again. That's, that's powerful. This is going to be, this will be fun. Well, I could just do like an update once a quarter. I don't need to do it every month. I could do it once yeah, a no, quarter or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, what's Greg's, what's Greg's email? You guys probably should email Greg. Here's a couple of reasons why you should email Greg. Number one, if you need to set up your own account. And number two, if you guys have somebody that has an IRA, is Greg the person that you need to send them to? 
Yeah, the answer is yes right now, right? Are you asking me? <laughs> Are you telling well, I'm, them? I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm getting my, my, my Zoom chat, as you can see, we're very active in here. So Super active. I love how active it is. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we have, we, our culture is so amazing. Our family is like the best. It's, there's, I, honestly, there's no comparison. Um, so guys, who, has, who is keeping Greg's information? It's not just IRAs, it's 401ks as well. What else do you guys do? Do you guys do other things like, um, what else do you guys do? <laughs> we, we are retirement accounts. That's, that is our, that's what we do. We don't do uh, anything really else. And actually, that's one thing I really talk about, which is important, is we are really good at that. And so any what kind about of retirement account. infinite banking? Uh, do I personally do it? Yes. Yes. I don't sell it. I don't do it. Actually, my 20 year old uh, uh, sells it and has been doing it now for 18 months. Uh, he, he probably sells like six, seven policies a day. Uh, it's pretty fun. And now he's also doing a second deal, real estate deal with me. So he, he's wanting to focus on real estate. Amazing. Um, okay. So yeah, no, I, do, I, do. I do IULs and I do whole life, but I never talk about it because I don't feel like I know enough. I've only been doing it for three years. I don't feel like I know enough about it, but do you, if you guys want me to do, to do that, I'll bring that in and tell you guys what I'm doing with my IULs and doing it with, with my um, whole life. We'll talk about that as well, but I want to do this. Greg, let's get set up. I'll contribute 60 grand sometime in the next 30 days or so. And um, let's freaking get this rolling. Perfect. We'll help you do it. Not guys, was this good? Should we have Greg come back like multiple, multiple times? Greg, that's what you want. You just want people to do business with you, right? That's it. That's all I want. Well, and, and then what I, what I get the most excited about, I think also what I've seen you when you go speak is the, you know, afterwards people coming up to me saying, I did that thing you talked about. And you know, my 5,000 is 50,000 like that to me is the greatest, the greatest gift. And that's I call, why I, do I call what I do it a uh, emotional income. It's what, it's how I receive yeah. my, my happiness in my life. Yes. 100%. And then I get, my kids get to be part of that and they get to see that. You know, helping. I want to help. I want to give as much as possible. We will give you just like if I, I will try to meet it. I don't know that I, I can, but I will attempt to give as much as I can. Pace, uh, your team, I know what they expect and I want to keep those expectations high. Uh, it's important to me. Amazing. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate your time. I, I didn't want to keep you long. This was a really great teaser for things in the future. And what we'll do is we'll just do more little case studies privately going forward. I won't stream it on YouTube. We'll just do it privately. Talk about my own money and talk about my stuff just inside my own community. And we'll have a lot of information. Dan Carter says, what's your contact information? Guys, somebody put in Greg's email in the side chat, please. One time. There it is. So let me stop that for just a second. Guys, Melissa Palmer just put the contact information for Greg in there. Here's two reasons why you need to reach out to Greg. Number one, if you want to do business with him, okay? Number two, if you're trying to raise capital, like I did, I had a client, a uh, private money lender that wanted to, actually, they weren't a private money lender, they were an investor. She had half a million dollars ready to jump into my syndication, and our syndication needed to close within a couple of weeks. She, the company she was working with was going to take eight weeks to get her money from her IRA to her self-directed, and she missed out on the opportunity. She DMs me all the time. Like, when are you doing the next one? When are you doing the next one? When are you doing the next one? These guys get their money, your, your private money lenders or your friends, your family or whoever, they get their mo money moved over from an IRA to a self-directed in two weeks on average. That's pretty amazing. That's it. That, that is our goal. That's what we're very, very good at. Dang. Okay. Um, guys, I'm going to turn the chat back on. You've got Greg at Horizon Trust. His email is in the side chat. Please take a screenshot of it, copy and paste it. Um, you're going to see him a lot more in our community. I've unlocked the chat. Please give Greg some love for coming up in here and spending years and years of his life to condense this into an hour and 15 minutes for us. Sounds like we've got a lot more to unpackage. We've got a lot more tangents to go on. We've got a lot of fun um, things to chat about. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Pace. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, bro, I'll see you at the next green room. I'm sure you will really soon. <laughs> <laughs> later, 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 brother. Um, yeah, guys, I get to hang out with Greg quite a bit. I see him all the time. We go to private dinners. What happens is people, um, Monique, yes. Uh, are, I hate doing this here, but are we still on call for the Zoom for Jackson Hole? Yes. Um, 
after this call at 7 p.m. I haven't seen an email from your team yet. I'm the one that sends the email. You got my email. So just give me a little bit. I will get you the Zoom link. But the answer is yes. We're just going to, we probably won't do a Zoom. What we'll probably do is just a phone call, me, you, and the agent. I just want to ask the agent a couple of questions of like, what's going on? Why should we do this? Blah, 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 and have some conversations. I don't think we're going to end up talking to the um, seller yet. Hold on. Let me unmute you, Monique. How are you doing, Monique? I'm good. Um, I don't think we're talking to the seller today. I think it's pre premature, especially with the seller being a little bit more of a challenging type of human being. I think it's smarter just to talk to the agent for the first phone call and just get some ammunition and then come back to the okay. table with the age to the agent, like two or three days later. Um, and actually do some underwriting, some strategy, maybe Monique could, you could even drive over there from Gillette and check some things out, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. Right. Cause I don't think, you, I don't think you're in Gillette. I think you're in like, a suburb of a suburb of Gillette, right? Um, I'm an hour from Gillette on a ranch in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I think everybody wishes that was them, to be honest. Yeah. So. The, the only person I know that's like you is Julie Burkhart. She lives on like 500 acres in Idaho on her, her own little private river. I'm on 50,000 acres. Dang. Yeah. So. That's like half the United States. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So yeah, Julie says it's two hours to everywhere. She has to drive two hours to the Boise airport. She's a lender. She's an investor. She's a partner of mine in the big Charlotte 408 unit deal. I imagine we'll do a bunch of stuff together in the future as well. But um, okay. yeah, I'll send you an email. I think a phone call is probably the best thing to do. Just a quick five to 10 minute phone call. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll tee it up and you and I can do some underwriting, a little bit more research based on the information we get. And then we'll do maybe a call with the seller at some point in the next couple of days. Okay. Perfect. Thank cool. you. Great Sorry. question. Um, okay, guys, was that fun? Should we, should we do some experiments and have some fun with that? It'll be great. It's, it's nice because what I want to do is I'm trying to empower you guys around raising private capital. I want you guys to understand everything money. This isn't just about creative finance, obviously some of these zooms you guys may or may not be ready for, but just opening up doors inside of your mind lets you guys have way more opportunities. And um, I didn't know this, 85 million IRAs and 96% of them are not self-directed. That's $5.3 trillion in private capital that is out there. That's a big mind shift for me that I'm like, how do I go find those people? How do I present to those people? And um, I think having conversations with Greg in the future is, is a really great, great way to go. Um, do you guys want to be on the Zoom with me when I deploy my 60 grand with Horizon Trust? Or do you think that's boring? I should just record it and give it to you guys. Okay. Do it live. I mean, why not? It'll help you guys out. And you'll see what your clients go through and all that kind of stuff. So look out for that in the next probably three, four weeks. I, to, to be honest, I don't have 60 grand right now. That's my problem. I don't have 60 grand. I have like no money. I just funded... I paid off a couple of private money lenders. I'm funding a 105 unit deal today. So I got to wait until next month's cash flow comes in on all my properties for me to deploy 60,000. Derek says he'll lend. Hey, Derek, lend me your 60 grand. I'll put it in my IRA. It'll be great. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, Q says, I think Pace asked questions. He already knows the answers to. Yes, I, I, that's my job, right? Like, if you guys watch Howard Stern, I'm sorry if you're not a big fan of Howard Stern, but he's the, one of the greatest interviews of all time. He's unbelievable. And I've watched and listened to him for years. My job is to act as if I don't know anything. It doesn't make sense for me to steer the conversation as if I already know where we're going. It's better for me to act enthused, excited about topics I already know about so that you guys can learn things um, authentically, genuinely, et cetera, okay? Uh, Scott says, my wife just told me to take all her 401ks to do something with. I can get her to sign off if you want to use that as a case study. That'd be kind of cool. Um, is that, who, who emailed Greg? Like, is this a great resource for us to add to our private community that we can start bringing him into some Zooms and start utilizing him as like an amazing, another pillar inside of our private community? Amazing. All right, cool. Um, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I know this is a random Zoom at a random time. Um, Monique, I'll send you an email here, um, shortly and I will see you guys. Let's see. Am I doing a zoom tomorrow, guys? 
I know I'm flying to Atlanta Thursday. Okay, uh, Caroline's doing a Zoom tomorrow with for the new students. And I will be... Okay, hold on. Friday, meetup in Atlanta. Who's coming to the meetup in Atlanta, everybody? I spent 10 grand, by the way. I probably would be able to fund my, a 401k if I didn't buy, spend so much money on your guys' tickets and spend so much money on your guys' um, meetups. Uh, hey, Carlo says, I'm a new student. I just joined about two hours ago. Can somebody reach out to Carlo and say hi to him, please? Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Love you guys. I'll see you guys in Atlanta on Friday night. And we've got multiple Zooms throughout the, the rest of the week. Next week, I'll do a couple of uh, longer Q&As, which will be fun. I might even do a long Q&A on Sunday. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, Caleb. D who was in the announcements last night? I do remember my announcement. Do you guys want to know my announcement? It's actually insane. Jamil and I got together, and we were talking about Clever Summit. And we were talking about how fun that was to bring our community together. It was like a big family reunion. So what we're going to do, be doing in March is we are going to be doing a sub to an astro. It's going to be called real estate campfire where it is way more community based than an event. That's like stage and speakers and all that kind of stuff. We're literally going to do campfires and like outdoors, it's going to be insane. We're calling it realestatecampfire.com. We're currently building the website up for it. It is insane. So we're going to give you guys enough time. It's going to be amazing weather. It's going to be in a location that we can all be outside. I mean, half of it will be inside, and then the other half will be outside where we actually have community activities. We get to know each other. It is going to be insanely big, like 3,000 people big, not 300, 3,000 thousand people. Um, we have a couple of people like um, Dan Fleischman. If you guys know who Dan Fleischman is, we're currently talking to him about using his whole ranch. He has an 80 acre ranch where we can do all sorts of really, really cool things. Um, so we're thinking maybe Temecula, California, perfect time of the year for that. And um, it'll be not three days, it'll be two days because those, th the, I think the three day events are just too much. Don't you guys think like three days is too much? Like give me, give me two days and maybe a thir the third day should be a free day, okay? The th uh, Derek, can you borrow the Airstream? You can borrow my Airstream anytime. You, Derek, you can, go bar you can borrow my Airstream. I got a truck that will pull it. You can borrow my truck. I don't have a Gulfstream. Oh, you, ha you have a rap guy? Cool. Um, okay, so what do you guys think? Do you think that's a pretty good announcement? realestatecampfire.com astro and sub two students we're going to create a waiting list i imagine it's going to be more than what we have to cap it at a certain number um so it'll be sold out really really quickly it's not it, we are going to charge for it because it's going to cost us a couple hundred thousand dollars to put together so we're going to try and break even on the event to get everybody to come out does that sound cool all right love it all right, guys, I've got a couple of things I got to take off for. Um, I'm not going to see my wife and kids for a couple of days, so I am going to go hang out with the kids. 